All right. So listen up. So we are talking today, Raider football. And I wanted to get to first, uh, guys, talk a little bit about uh, this week. I went out to the unofficial workouts, right? You guys have seen uh, a lot of the Raider players. Some of the fans have been posting from here in Las Vegas from a local park and everybody messages me and asks me what park, what park. And I'm not going to tell you because I'm trying to respect the privacy, but um, I was out there this week and a lot of people are making a big deal out of these unofficial workouts at the fact that they're out at a park. And, and don't get me wrong, uh, but it's a good thing. I mean, these guys are out there. It's the veterans. It's a lot of the rookies are out there, younger players, just getting on the same page again because there's been no mini camps. Of course, the NFL canceled the rest of mini camps for the rest of the off season, and the teams will not get together physically uh, as a team to play and to to run through plays and so on until training camp towards the end of July, guys. And so when you look at all of this, um, you know, I was out there. My impression of it was it was great, you know, but but I don't know that it's anything you can read from other than being there and physically seeing and watching the guys go at it and and play together um, was was interesting because I, I felt like people like Derek Carr, I felt I felt the leadership. You know, again, I haven't been to a lot of Raider practices because we've been covering them from a distance. But when I look at what they've done and what they're able to do out there, it was refreshing to see it, especially to see those young guys because they're moving not only into the NFL with a new team, but also a new city for everybody involved in the Raider, or Raider organization. So to see them just organize and get together, I think is a good thing. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think it was a good thing just to see them go out there and, and, and be trying to get on the same page. You know, I mean, that's really what it's all about. It's not going to be something that, you know, is going to make them all of a sudden have a high uh, octane offense in, in 2020. But again, just kind of getting familiarity with each other. And again, seeing Derek Carr kind of take control of that and, uh, you know, get these guys organized. It's also good for the defensive backs. I believe Keyshawn Nixon was one of the guys that was out there. It's good for them just to get a little bit of rep and a little bit of practice. And uh, I think that that's, that's important, again, because what you said, that they haven't had the offseason, they haven't had the OTAs, they haven't had the mini camp. They need to get as many reps in as possible. And even though it's nothing official, it's just out in the park there in, in Henderson or Vegas, it's, it's still a good thing for the team and the team morale as well. Yeah, I think I think you touched on the leadership aspect of it. To me, that's that's a real big uh, good sign to see right now because we've heard for a number of years now about wanting to change the culture, and I think that um, you're, you're finally starting to see that. There's a lot of accountability, a lot of buy-in there from all the from all the players, uh, a lot of the young players, and I think Derek Carr deserves a lot of the credit because I, you know, without knowing for certain who's the ring leader here, you, you have to imagine he's the he's the guy he's the catalyst behind this. No doubt. And, and Mo, what about, what about, is, is there anything that um, people can read into this um, or, or is it, is it one of those deals where um, look, this is what they should be doing. The fact that they are doing it's voluntary. Uh, we shouldn't read too much into it. Well, one is something that they should be doing Two, You want to see their car kind of take control of the, of the group and just kind of run the offense. This is, again, this is year three in the offense. So of all the people, he should know, X, Y, Z, what to do on uh, how to run things. Now, it's good for veterans like Jason Witten. I know Foster Moreau was out there. He said it was good to be back out there, of course, before his ACL at the end of last season. So that's a positive sign because they said he was ahead of schedule. Usually teams are very, very optimistic with injuries, especially serious significant injuries. Out there running around the park and just getting loose and getting ready for the season. Well, and, and by the way, um, we, I was respectful because I've gone out, I've watched about six practices right out there, uh, and the number of players has grown. But you mentioned Foster Moreau. Foster Moreau uh, threw some expletives at me because I took a picture. I just want to let him know. I, I like Foster. Good dude. Uh, and I understood I wasn't uh, I wasn't going to publish the pictures and I haven't published the pictures. Uh, but but it was sort of funny. Uh, Chaz, when you look at this, too, as, as a fan, too, has been a, a longtime Raider fan. And now with the team coming to Las Vegas, um, you feeling good about watching these guys that they're actually getting to, especially because they haven't been able to officially practice. So I think teams and some of the, at least some of the teams are starting to realize, hey, if we want to start to catch up or, or be ready when we hit camp and, and the fact that we haven't been able to do physical OTAs, you think that's going to help them in their transition here in Vegas? Yeah, sure. Anytime you can get the guys together in any kind of situation, if it's just you know, team building or, or, you know, building that chemistry or, or, you know, working on their plays, you know, you're trying to improve every game, every practice, every snap and not waste any opportunities, right? Reps matter. 
even out in the park, you know, those little conversations after every route, you know, like uh, when this happens, I want you to do that. Or when that happens, I want you to go there. Um, you know, those little building blocks will go a long way in, in helping these players um, get on the same page faster and they'll come into training camp that much more focused. Yeah, and and the interesting thing too, guys, just so you know, was um uh and and my good friend Mick Akers, who writes for the Las Vegas Review Journal here, mentioned it I think this week. But listening and watching practice, and and, and again, not to give away too much because I'm trying to respect the players' privacy out there, even though they're in the middle of a public park that I pay for with my HOA dues, by the way. Um, but no. It, <laughs> The thing is, they they were using new terminology. Like, there's a lot of Las Vegas terminology. You know, uh, Carr was back there. They were running a play. They were running a set, uh, which had four wideouts, by the way. But they're running a set, and um, uh, he's yelling Bellagio, Bellagio. <laughs> and uh, so, so clearly, you know, they're trying to situate, get themselves situated with this. But but Q in a year where they have not been able to physically get together as well. Um, even more so from a leadership and a, a um, uh, I think just a familiarity point of view, it's more important, I think, for these guys to do it. And to Mo's point, Derek Carr stepping up uh, and he's been a leader, but now it feels like he's he's taken that next jump to the point where uh, he wants everybody. He, do, he doesn't want to just be the quiet leader. He wants everyone to know that he's the alpha and he's ready to go. And that's what we want from him, right? That's what we've been wanting from him. We want to hear him be a little bit more vocal, show a little bit more emotion, you know, be that guy that uh, gets angry when things don't go the right way. And, you know, going back to those guys practicing in the park, the other thing is, like you mentioned, they're all the young guys, so it shows that they're all bought in. You know, they're not just guys that that were drafted and, and got on the team and thought, okay, well, we're going to – we're stuck. We're, we're good now. You know, we've, we've made our, our spot. No, they're actually buying in, and they know that they need to work as much as possible. So, uh, yeah, the leadership skills and the leadership uh, uh, ability of Derek Carr is, is coming out by uh, organizing those practices. And then, like I said, the, the buy-in is really good to see as well from the rest of the players that are out there. Yeah, there's no no doubt about that. And I think that um, one of the things, too, that, that excites me about – them just getting out there is is they're here right because with all this covid stuff and everything that's been going on one of the things that that um that you kind of worry about and we talked about this last week on the show which is the fact that they move training camp the nfl is requiring teams to have their training camps right at their home headquarters uh is an advantage because they're in a new city players are in new homes and all this kind of stuff it just allows them to settle in but when you look at the fact that the mini camps were all canceled guys uh this this past week and and that the fact that they're not going to get the opportunity to get together until July 27th when camp starts. What what sort of challenges or what do you think is that there's to me, it seems like all teams are in the same boat. But it, are there teams like the Raiders who you're seeing at least publicly that are getting together that might have a little bit advantage of that? Or you think everybody's going to be in the same boat because of the pandemic and what we've been through? Sure, yeah, I, I think now. Oh, go ahead, Mo. Go ahead, Mo. <laughs> Veteran teams now, I think, have the advantage because if you got a veteran who's been in the league for four or five years, they know how to keep their body in shape. Usually the terminology from different offenses overlaps, so usually they'll use a different word for the same play. So all they have to do is just get the terminology down. But for the Raiders, they have two first-round picks who are expected to play large roles, Henry Ruggs, Damon Arnett. And those guys may not be up to speed when the season starts, especially Arnett, where defense is a little more difficult because you're going up against wide receivers. Henry Ruggs, uh, defense have to respect his speed so he can at least affect the game in that way. But with the Raiders, they have a young squad, and those young guys need the reps. Even Trayvon Mullen, who had an end of the good year last year, he still needs those reps to continue on and building on his development. So I think the Raiders, having a young team, it kind of hurts them. But again, no excuses this year. No, that that's absolutely right. Uh, and Evan, you you know when you look at that, the fact that the Raiders are young, yes, they have a lot of continuity on offense, right? Which we we we've talked about in the past as well. So so it may it seems like the offense, even though when I was out at the park the other day, offense and defense, as Q mentioned, but the fact that that offense has a lot of returning pieces. Yes, they have the new pieces like Rugs and 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 Bowden and some of these guys. But the fact that they're all coming back and they're familiar with each other, I think, gives them an advantage going into the season. 
Yeah, definitely a huge advantage, uh, especially, you know, with the offensive line all being back. That's a, obviously a huge part of the offense and, and having the quarterback there back and in the third year of Gruden's system, that's going to be huge. But there are still those those young skill position guys like uh, Bowden and, and Edwards and Ruggs. Uh, they need to get up to speed and it's going to be tough for them to do that uh, without you know, ha- having those mini camps and the OTAs and only being able to really work with your coaches virtually that there's going to be a big gap there. It's going to have to be made up. And hopefully you can lean on your veteran guys uh, who have been there like Carr and, and uh, Williams and, and those types of guys to really help get those young guys up to speed. This, yeah, this no is doubt. going to be a year. This is going to be a year where I believe that there's a lot of veterans going to be needed just for that exact reason that you just mentioned. They're not going to have uh, the chance to get up to speed as quickly as you'd like a lot of the rookies to do. So right now, the familiarity with uh, John Gruden's offense and and the guys that were there last year and, and the step that they took in the right direction last year, that's going to be very, very important for them to be able to uh, get up, up to speed and also kind of have a Tyrell Williams, you know, grab a Henry Ruggs by the by the neck and say, hey, this is how, you know, you got to do this. This is the, uh, the route you've got to run or, you know, be able to kind of lean on those guys as well, because the veterans are going to be so important this year uh, since they don't have those OTAs, since they didn't have rookie mini camps. Since they, I mean, there's so many things that are playing against them. And that's not just for the Raiders. That's for every team in the league. But the veterans are going to be very important in 2020, in my opinion. Yeah, no, they you know, are. They don't really lean on the, the rookies that much anyway, Q. You're right. So it's pretty much the, the whole team is intact from last year and all the coaching staff. Um, there's a few you know, key players on defense that are new and obviously the defensive line coach. But other than that, you know, I think the whole thing is pretty much intact and they all already have that verbiage. They're already, they're already kind of on the same page and in sync. So I, I definitely think it's, it's a bonus having, you know, all the same people. You know, you see a lot of teams with new coaches, new players, new everything coming in, and that's going to take them a lot longer to get on – on track and it will for the Raiders. Yeah, no doubt about it. And Mo, we, we talked earlier about,